All right, so you're considering moving to the Tampa area and you have no idea where you're going to live. And if you're not from here, that can be a pretty scary thought to even try to wrap your mind around. If you're moving from a distance like we did, we moved from 1,200 miles away. We only knew one person in the greater Tampa area. And that was kind of nerve wracking. I'm not going to lie. You know, walking away from our support group, our family, our friends, that is not an easy decision. You know, whether you're considering relocating because of your family or a job or just opportunity as a whole, or if you're coming because the weather is amazing. What I want you to know is that you're making a good decision. Tampa is a wonderful area to move to. And, you know, we're going to share some of those stories with you today. But the big thing I want you to know is that there is ways to make a quality decision. And our goal here is to help you through that process today. In this video, I'm going to give you a bird's eye tour of the beautiful areas here in Tampa, Florida. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to let you in on a little secret that the locals do not want me to share with you. So if that interests you, stay tuned. Hey everyone, Juan Alcala with the True Living Group here in Tampa, Florida. And if this is your first time to the channel, we talk all things Tampa Bay. What it's like to live here, what it's like to play here, what it's like to experience the Tampa living, the dining, the food, the outdoor, the beaches and the sunshine. And if that interests you, we're going to get after that right now. If you're new to the channel, we do tons of videos about Tampa, Florida. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell so you can be notified every time we drop a new video. We're getting phone calls every single day from people all over the country interested in moving or relocating to the Tampa area. If you are interested in moving, relocating, buying an investment property, whatever your real estate needs are, please feel free to reach out. You can call, email, text message, DM, however you got to get hold of us. We got your back when it comes to moving to Tampa, Florida. The information that I'm going to share with you today comes from websites like the U.S. Census, Florida.gov. Tampa Visitor Bureau, Niche.com, all great public resources. And if you check out the description below, you'll find a link to all of those sites. And I just want to share that with you because what I want you to know is I'm in no way, shape or form trying to steer you to one area or another. And the information that I'm pulling from is public. And y'all, Tampa is amazing. There's plenty of great spots and great locations neighborhood by neighborhood. You can see all kinds of information, but until you get here and put boots on the ground, you really don't know what's going to be the absolute best for you. So that's why I want to share with you my personal experience, having moved from a, a different state to Tampa, you know, a little over three years ago, I think we're a very good resource and would love to help you through that process as well. So any questions, as always, please feel free to put them in the comments below too. Now let's get this thing started. Now we're going to start with the map view at about a 30,000 foot level. And then we're going to work our way down into specific areas. And what we want to focus on today are the three major counties that make up the greater Tampa area, which are going to include Hillsborough, Pinellas County, and Pasco County. All right, so we're going to get started with Hillsborough County, which is where Tampa actually is. And as you can see on the map here, Hillsborough County goes from the northeastern side of Tampa Bay to the southeastern side of Tampa Bay, all the way east towards Plant City. It's a pretty big geographic area, but Tampa is right downtown, as you can see. Um, and the thing, there's some really cool things in Tampa, and I kind of want to walk you guys through those. You know, we've got Steinbrenner Stadium where the New York Yankees come and play uh, spring ball. And if you guys haven't seen that stadium, it is beautiful. And I guess you would expect nothing less, especially if you're a Yankees fan. I mean, for a spring training ball field, it is awesome. You've got to check that out. Raymond James Stadium is right down the road from that, where the Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers play, which is great. If you go downtown Tampa, you've got Amway Arena, where the Stanley Cup champion uh, Lightning play as well. So, I mean, this town is great. They call it Tampa Bay. You've got the Riverwalk. The downtown area is fun. It's bright. It's vibrant. People are out you know, that's the financial district. It's a really cool place to be. Very fun here. So I want to talk about some other things inside of uh, Hillsborough County as well. You know, we talked about taxes before. Florida has a state sales tax of 6%. And in Hillsborough County, we actually have a 2.5% increase on top of that. So it's actually 8.5% 
sales tax when you're in Hillsborough County. So taxes there are a little bit steep. Again, I know you don't have to pay an income tax, but eight and a half percent sales tax is on the high side a little bit. I do want to talk about property taxes. We have covered that a few different times in different videos, but I didn't get too specific about it. And I want to share some exact numbers with you now. Property taxes in Hillsborough County are 1.023% of your state equalized value of your property. So just a little over 1%. I know I've shared this with you before, but where we're from back in Michigan, this is actually significantly less property taxes than we were paying. Now, I know a few other places in the country, you can, you can pay much less than we were paying back there in Metro Detroit. But if you live in places like New York or California, you could be paying a lot more in taxes. So I think you know if you look at the overall cost of living, you know, we've talked about housing and affordability here in the Tampa area, and it is less. It, on a scale of 100, we come in just around 95. Um, so take that into consideration. Our population here is right around 1.5 million in Hillsborough County as well. So that's some really good insights on that. There's some great shopping in Tampa specifically. One of the areas that my wife and I really love is Armature Works. And we go here and it is a indoor outdoor market. This place is wonderful. All kinds of food and dining on the inside. They actually have an event space as well. There's weddings that take place there and the building is beautiful. It used to be an old manufacturing facility that they've converted into this hall style um, uh, food and beer garden, so to speak. Um, and it's just phenomenal. You can get sushi and wine and uh, tacos and pizza and coffee. And there's small shops, boutiques inside of there. And actually, they got really good Cubans there. Shout out to Cuba down there. It's wonderful Cubans. Um, they've got an outdoor checkerboard, so you can be entertained as well. It's right on the Tampa River. It, ties right into the river walk. It's just a beautiful place to go hang out. My wife and I love to go down there. We try to go at least once a month on date nights to go hang out there. There's wonderful restaurants like Ulele, um, which you got to go. I'm telling you right now and have the oysters. Do not forget to have the oysters. They are incredible. Just phenomenal place to visit. Now we're going to move over to the West into Pinellas County. Guys, this is where my wife and I decided to settle. We love Pinellas County. Tampa as a whole is amazing, like I was telling you before, and we're going to share a lot more of this as we go along in this video here, but we decided on Pinellas County because we are beach nuts. We love the beach. We wanted to be around the water. And in Pinellas County, it is completely surrounded by water. You've got the Gulf on one side, the Bay on the other. At the top of Pinellas County, you've got Tarpon Springs. If you go all the way down south, you're down in St. Pete Beach. It's just absolutely stunning. 35 miles of beautiful beaches. Guys, you should see it. White sands. It is so incredibly gorgeous. Pinellas County has a lot to offer. Now, our population, I think we're right around just shy of a million people. I think it was like 978,000 last time I checked. Our taxes are actually the lowest here in Pinellas County at 0.937%, but we do have some of the higher property values. So you got to kind of take that into account. The closer you get to the water, the, the more expensive the properties tend to be, or I would say the, the more they cost. I won't call it expensive. It's still ridiculously inexpensive to me when you look at places like New York, um, you know, Martha's Vineyard, Los Angeles, San Diego. I, Tampa is crazy affordable. So um, keep that in perspective, you know, so, but you're still talking about on a $400,000 house, having less than a 1% tax base is, is amazing. Now it will change. Some cities have, you know, taxes added onto that because of schools and everything as well. But, you know, again, in the, in the area as a whole, you're, you know, you're basically looking at about 1% tax on the state equalized value of your property. Great tax rates here. Speaking of taxes, we talked before about the state sales tax being 6%. Well, here in Pinellas County, we have a 1% increase above that. So we're at 6% compared to Hillsborough County, which was 8.5%. So there's a percent and a half difference there. That's nice. Keep that in your pocket. Something to take into consideration as well. Some really cool things about the area are the Blue Jays play their spring training ball in Dunedin, which is a great little coastal town marina. It's got a small town feel, even though Pinellas County has a pretty big population overall. A million people actually on this, this peninsula here is a lot. I think last time I read, it said that per square mile in the county of Pinellas, there are more people here 
than there are anywhere else in the state of Florida, which blew my mind because I was convinced that it was going to be Miami or Fort Lauderdale because they have huge populations. But because Pinellas County is, you know, it's not going anywhere in terms of size. There's nowhere else to go. Um, it's got a pretty big population, but a place like Dunedin has a very small town feel, just like the area that I'm going to tell you about later, which I told you that I would give a little bonus away that the locals do not want me to share with you. So we'll get back to that in a second. But great locations here, St. Pete Beach. We've got downtown St. Petersburg, which is an incredible spot to go hang out. Um, shout out to Casita Tacos. When you come to St. Petersburg, go to Casita's tacos. It is unbelievable. You will not regret it. Great taco, great value. What a cool town. Lots of art. It's a fun place to go hang out. Go check out First Fridays um, if, you, if you're young and you like to hang because that's a place to go. It is just a bumping, vibrant town. You'll have a great time. You've got Clearwater. Now, the thing I'll say about Clearwater is Clearwater is definitely a touristy place when it comes to spring break. So if that is not your jam, do not go anywhere near Clearwater Beach during spring break. But if you want to be around a bunch of people, if you want to have a great time, you want to hang out outdoors, then go to Clearwater. It's amazing. Um, it is a great location. So Pinellas County overall is great. Property values are a little bit higher than they are in Hillsborough County on average. Um, taxes are lower. Just a great place to be. If you want to be by the beaches, you want to be in Pinellas County, guys. All right, we're getting to the third and final county here before we get to that little insider tip. And this county is called Pasco County. It's to the north of Pinellas County. Pretty good size here as well. You're going to see this thing. It is not small. Now, here, I want to preface this because Pasco County is one of those places that I think has beautiful outdoor living. There are plenty of parks. The, the average home costs less in Pasco County. The taxes are less. I think it's 0.961% uh, you know, for your, your property taxes there, which is really good. And again, the housing value is a little bit lower. Um, but there are some challenges here in Pasco that I, that I do want to share because Pasco is one of those places that gets a bad rap. Um, and, you know, sometimes for good reason. But what I want you to know is there's some beautiful places to live in Pasco County. So please don't take this as anything other than me sharing my experience. There has definitely been, um, you know, some stories that have come out of that county. And like I said, if you live here, people will, will you know, they'll kind of give it a bad name, but like it doesn't deserve that. It's a great place. Could the term Florida man have begun in Pasco County? Maybe. <laughs> but again, guys, I wouldn't have any problem living there now that I live in the area, you know, moving down from, from Michigan. There's probably some tough spots there, but no matter where you live, there's tough areas, y'all. So don't don't let that stop you from looking at, at places like that. So I want to kind of keep that in perspective. Pasco's overall population is a little bit lower. They're shy of 600,000. So there's definitely more space and room to run there. Like I said, outdoor living parks, there's a lot to offer in Pasco County, which is great. Their sales tax, they're at 6% plus the 1% also. So they're at 7% there too. So, you know, if those things are come under consideration for you, take those into account, look at them, say, Hey, okay, is there an opportunity to live here? But some great Great locations in Pasco County as well. Pasco's got some great beaches as well. Hudson Beach is a good one. You know, you've got Newport Ritchie. It's a great place to go fishing. So if that's on your radar, there really isn't a bad place on the Gulf Coast to go and do some charter fishing. You will definitely have a great time when it comes to going out, living on the water, being anywhere near beaches. If you're in Pasco County or if you're in uh, Pinellas County, there are a lot of beaches available to you. It's just a great place to go hang out. All right. So now we got to that insider information that the locals don't want me to share with you guys. And I'm going to share because this is why we came. And I'm going to name this town for you right now. But what I want you to know is you can't run down here and buy it up. Okay. Number one, because it's just not big, <laughs> which is good. Um, but number two, it is a little hidden gem. Most people don't know about it. When you look at the greater Tampa area, most people talk about places like Clearwater Beach or St. Pete Beach, but they don't talk about the place that I'm about to name next. And this place is wonderful. And I'm going to tell you why. We've got a tiny little two lane road that doesn't allow for a ton of traffic. The population's just shy of about 4,500 people in total. There is an intercoastal waterway when you go from the mainland over to the intercoastal waterway and then to the Gulf 
So you've got water access on both sides. It's incredible. The beaches are white sand. They're fairly quiet overall. They can get a bit busy during the peak season. When we say that, we're talking about spring break. Look, everybody from the Midwest, from Canada, from the North, they come down I-75, they come down 95, and they end up in the convergence in this area. And um, if you've ever been down here during those times, you know it can get busy. Like I said, the locals hate it. But, you know, hey, you got to take the good with the bad. For roughly nine months of the year, we have our beaches to ourselves, which is awesome. And they are not crazy busy. And the town that I'm going to share with you in just one second, I know you guys are dying to find out, is, is called Indian Rocks Beach. And this is why my wife and I moved here. We came to Tampa. We love the area. But when we came over and started looking at the coastal towns, Indian Rocks Beach was that place for us. You know, one of the first things we noticed when we moved here is, was there weren't any tall buildings. At least we didn't think there were any. There were only a few. There are three buildings on our entire beachfront that are over, that are 60 feet tall. I think they're 63 feet each. And that happened back in the 80s. And then they did not allow it anymore. So any home that gets built cannot be taller than 43 feet tall. Any condominium complex cannot be taller than 43 feet tall, which makes a great, great location because you don't feel like you have these huge high rises, you know, sucking up all the sunlight, you know, and the sunsets, which is why you've got to come see a Gulf Coast sunset. They are absolutely stunning. Cotton candy skies, golden skies. I mean, they are just so beautiful, y'all. The beach is calm. The waves never get crazy unless there's a hurricane, which, you know, that's very few and far between, but the beaches are calm. They stay fairly warm for most of the year white sand. I cannot complain. Our downtown is quaint. We've got sliced pizzeria, which is fantastic. Um, 18 on the rocks, just so many cool places downtown for you guys to go check out Jake's Cantina, uh, PJ's Oyster Bar. There is some great food and dining, great atmosphere here. Um, you've got to go check it out. And I can't leave out the, the big draw, Krabby Bills, which if you're not from the area, go check out those guys. They do stone crab. They do it right when in stone crab season is around, but that place is always off the chain. If you're going to come to Indian Rocks Beach and eat, just know that you're going to be waiting line to eat at Krabby Bills. It is the number one spot for seafood. If you're looking for that fast casual, there are some great fine dining locations here as well. Indian Rocks Beach, y'all. It is amazing. I know the locals are going to be so mad at me for sharing it, but I just have to. It was the reason we made the decision to move here. That beach changed our lives and we hope it can change yours too. All right, y'all. I hope that was extremely helpful for you if you're considering making a move to the greater Tampa area and just don't know where to start. As always, hit the subscribe and click that little bell so you can be notified every time we drop a new video just like this. Um, if you are considering relocating or moving or you want to invest in the Tampa area, please feel free to contact me and my team. You can call, email, text message, DM, however you got to get hold of me. Don't worry about it. We got your back when relocating to Tampa, Florida. And as always, we'll see you on the next time and go out and live that Tampa life.